Well, after two episodes of different timelines, The Flash finally seems to be getting back on track with... Hey guys, I'm The Flash, Season 3, Episode 3, Magenta, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode. You guys know I really did enjoy last week's episode, and that's mainly because it felt like the actual premiere of the show. Episode 1 was, you know, kind of a cool idea with Flashpoint and everything, but they didn't really go anywhere with it. However, last week, talking about Episode 2, Barry deciding to stay in this world, that was something I actually was interested in seeing, you know, is the way that, um, that that turned out. I really did uh, enjoy last week's episode, and I gotta say that this episode, this to me was the Flash getting back on track. I feel like last se ever since last season, the show has been very unusually dark. Well, obviously it's been dark for a reason, because, you know, kill I'm killing off Henry and everything. But since then, the show has kind of gone this really solemn territory, and this was getting back to what the show is best at, which is some killer reveals... Some really great pep talks, and just some overall really, and back to the speedster of the week, we definitely did see that, but let's just get into this episode, because I definitely do want to talk about it. Uh, there's some really good stuff coming on, we had some characters reintroduced in this episode, but we start off, we see Barry, he's singing the CSI lab, uh, you know, the uh, Star Labs, feeling very excited to go out on a date, and he has this whole monologue about how things have changed, and how he feels like things are back to normal, so he shows up with a huge rose bouquet when he picks up Iris, who explains this tonight, she wants to be with Barry, minus all of the Flash talk, you know, as much as she does like Barry, she wants to be with him when he's not the Flash, and I understand understand what she's talking about. I mean, you know, he's so focused on being the Flash that for once she kind of just wants them to have a normal uh, date, and I like seeing that. So Barry takes Iris to this extremely expensive looking restaurant. They continue to talk awkwardly about work. A siren then goes off outside as an apparent robbery takes place, and Iris tells Barry to just go and use his speed. You know, she knows that they're not going to be able to do this, you know, do this date right now, so he goes off to use his speed, and a moment later, we see Cisco calls Barry, who is basically back to being his fun, goofy self, which I like seeing. I mean, Cisco last week was kind of strange to see him a little bit more, a lot more depressed and dark than he usually is. But I like that Cisco is back to the Cisco that we know and love because Cisco is one of the most fun things about the show. And not having Cisco, you know, uh, the way he's supposed to be, felt like we were distracting from things. So I'm like, to, I like seeing that Cisco is back to where how he should be. We find that a breach has been opened, and we don't know why a breach has been opened, you know, for some reason it's been opened. Two familiar faces pop through asking for help, that being Wells and Jesse, and that starts our main plot of this episode, which has to do with Wells and Jesse, which it was great to see these two characters again. I was very happy to see both of them return, because like I said, I really hated <coughs> that they went back to uh earth 2 i was even more pissed off when barry started the timeline because to me it seemed like nothing really you know that didn't happen so i'm glad that in this timeline they do know wells and jesse i thought the second we were going to meet them barry's gonna be the only one who knew who they were luckily that's not the case Jesse, we find, is now a speedster because she was actually affected by dark matter, and Wells wants to run some tests in a brand new speed lab, which Barry admits that he actually has never seen before. So again, that's another change from the timeline, and Wells instantly figures out that Barry's travel back to the past again without telling anyone or else he would know about the new speed lab. You know, he knows, obviously, what Barry has been doing, and... While he's kind of upset that he no longer has his speed, he decides to leave as Jesse is testing out just how quick that she is, you know, realizing that he doesn't have speed. Wells talks about how it has different effects, like the dark matter affects different kind, you know, di effects sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. And I feel like Wally's going to be delayed. Like, he was affected by the dark matter, but he's definitely going to get delayed. He's going to be affected uh, a lot later. Because <clears throat> we know that he is eventually going to turn into Kid Flash. It has to happen. You don't want Wally West to not turn into Kid Flash. It just doesn't happen. So he decides to leave as Jesse is testing out just how quick she is, which she is extremely fast. I mean, she was, like, going around the whole thing. I mean, she's faster than Barry. It's pretty crazy. So, we then get introduced to uh, our the character of a uh, very angry, abusive father, dad, named John, who's screaming at his scared teenager about making dinner, and in that moment, we get introduced to the character of Frankie, played by Joey King. Her eyes glow pink, and she says, sorry, John, but Frankie is gone, and uh, very interesting the way that that was done, uh, but again, we haven't had a speedster of the week in a while. It seems like it was so Zoom-centric in the past few episodes that it's been very, 
It, it has been a while since we had a Meta Human of the Week plot, and I like that we got that here. You know, that's how the Flash started, and I, I like seeing that. It felt very much like a Back to Basics Flash, which I like seeing. So Bear shows up at the police station where Iris is trying to find out new information about the man who was attacked by a lamppost. They continue to talk about their date and hopefully trying again, but this time without any emergency Flash interruptions. So, again, it's very awkward. It's just not really working in the way they want it to. And we see Joe is then questioning Frankie in a dark room about what happened to John. Her foster daddy was in the hospital after being hit by a lamppost, and Frankie explains that she doesn't remember what happened because she blacked out. And I thought overall Magenta was a very compelling character. Magenta is someone who, when she turns into Magenta, she completely blacks out after. You know, she doesn't have any recollection of what she did, and I thought overall it was very interesting. I don't really think we've had... We've had characters kind of like that, but this was just really well done the way they told the story. I like seeing that and again it felt very back to basics in that way and I definitely really did enjoy seeing the story play out in the way it did. So Barry tells Joe that only a metahuman with super strength could move a post that thick. Julian shows up, chimes in that there was no fingerprints on the post and Julian is very background stuff, so he really does not have a ton to do. You can just tell he doesn't really trust Barry, and he's kind of trying to do his own thing. But meanwhile, back at Star Labs, Jesse is testing really uh, rather well, but Wells is standing because he's afraid that something bad will happen to his daughter, and uh, if she's a hero like Barry. And I really did like this monologue here, you know, with him talking about how he doesn't, he's not here to get her to, you know, use her powers and get her to turn into a metahuman everything, he's here to try to get Caitlyn and Sisko to talk her out of it, and I thought that was honestly a really good twist. I like the way that was done, you know, talking about the dangers of using superpowers, because he actually doesn't want her to turn into a speedster, you know, he feels that right now, uh, it's not the time for her, you know, he just, the thing about what Wells has gone through, you know, he just lost his, he just, you know, found his daughter, she's now back in his life, these two have this really good dynamic, you know, and he doesn't want to lose that, he wants to make sure that they keep that dynamic going, and I like seeing that. So back at the police station, Joe tries to comfort Wally about not having any speed, even though he got hit by dark matter, and that it's possible to still help people without having superpowers. And I really like the dynamic between these two. It was kind of missing last season. I feel like we kind of had something between Joe and Wally, but Wally was so against, um, Joe last season that it took a while for these two to really bond. So I like seeing Joe and Wally bonding this season. I think it's just really, again, adding to something I really did not like last season. So Barry joins Julian in, in the uh, crime lab where he's isolating an element that is common in all the husks that they found. They think that Jesse might have the same mysterious element in her DNA, we find out. So Julian stops Frankie, starts screaming to her, accusing her of hurting her foster father and putting him in the hospital. And she turns into Magenta with a sinister look, glowing eyes, says now she's going to do the same to him. She bends metal with her mind, and I don't blame her for doing that to Julian. Julian was kind of being a dick in that situation. But she pulls down the huge golden metal platform on the wall. She screams that her name is now Magenta, and that is what she wants to be called. Frankie's gone, and that's how she turns into Magenta. So in alleyway, the Flash tries to calm her down, but she effortlessly tosses a police car down the road, disappears, and back at Star Labs, a team takes a peek at Frankie's file to learn that she actually has a split personality and has lived in some pretty horrible foster homes. And again, even though this was a one character, I thought they did a good job with developing her character overall. I really did care for Frankie by the end of this episode. So Barry explains to the team that Magenta definitely got her powers from Dr. Alchemy, and I like where this is going. I like that we're finding out that Alchemy pretty much is out of hand in everything going on so far this season. You know, he helped, uh, he's now helped Magenta, and he helped, uh, I always forget his name, but the person from last week, he helped that, he helped him as well. So again, we don't really know what Dr. Alchemy's real plan is. We just know that clearly he has, you know, some sort of plan with everyone. I feel like he's trying to get a team together to rally against the Flash, and I feel like that this is how he's going to do it. He's going to give everyone these uh, speed abilities, which I think is interesting. But it also makes me think that Wally might actually get his speed abilities possibly from Dr. Alchemy. I'll get more into that when I get to predictions, but I thought that overall was very interesting to find that out, and and uh, we see uh, after this, they decide that someone that angry and powerful needs to be tracked down as well as annoys Kaylin to go talk to Jesse before she speeds off to find Frankie. I love how she's like, oh, we don't really have a relationship, but Wells is trying to tell her that she does. She she suggests that Jesse take it slow because she's just learning until Jesse figures it out that her dad put Kaylin up to talking to her and storms out. You know, she's not going to just talk to Kaitlyn just because Wells wanted her to. So Jesse confronts Wells, who tells her that he just wants her to be safe. And after an argument, Jesse speeds off with Wally, offering to talk to her.
but again, she isn't really relenting. She kind of just wants to do this on her own. I like that she's not just going to easily give in. You know, she wants to do it on her own terms, and I like seeing that. So Magenta secretly meets with Dr. Alchemy to ask him how to get rid of Frankie because she wants to be in control all the time. And Alchemy tells her how to show Frankie how powerful Magneta, Ma uh, Magneta is, Magenta is, and she won't return. So I thought of Rolda was interesting. Nah, why did I say Magneta? It's not X-Men. But uh, basically, I thought overall that was very interesting. We found out that, again, Alchemy clearly is trying to get these people to turn into different kinds of, you know, split personalities. You had, uh, you know... Uh, Rival last week, and now you have Magenta. This will rival for two episodes, and now you have Magenta. And I'm wondering if every single villain this season is going to be because of Dr. Alchemy, and if that's really where we're headed, that's going to be really interesting, because yes, we kind of have had that with Reverse Flash. We didn't really have that with Zoom last year. They tried to do it. I don't really... Reverse Flash, they kind of did it as well. This will be the first season, though, where really everything that goes on is because of Dr. Alchemy, and if that's really where we're headed, I'm very interested in getting more into this character because I really think it's something different than The Flash hasn't done, and I'm all for them changing things up. You guys know I love that, and this is no exception. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this is going to go. So Jesse then explains to Wally she was hoping he had gotten her pow uh, powers too, that when she first got hit, she started running from a car, and now she never wants to stop. So she's kind of in this state where she's kind of like addicted to her powers, and Wally stupidly steps out into oncoming traffic and hopes that a truck will jumpstart his non-existent powers. This was dumb, I'm not gonna lie, it was dumb, but Wally isn't really the smartest guy. I mean, we've seen before, Wally isn't really smart, so I really didn't have a problem with this. Wally, in general, has not been the smartest of characters. You know, think of the... Um, the upbringing that he had, or the lack of one, just Wally in general is not really someone that thinks things through, and I feel like this is going to be character development of Wally's part, you know, he's going to turn into Kid Flash, but I feel he's going to learn stuff along the way, so this was not really a problem for me, I mean, that's exactly what Wally would do, so Jesse saves his life, stops him from being hit by the speeding truck, if Jesse wasn't there, he would have obviously died, so Barry and Joe are yelling at Wally, while Wells is yelling at Jesse about the entire situation, and... Obviously, Barry's really pissed at Wally for doing this. I mean, I get that he was trying to, you know, try to see if maybe he had powers, but clearly he doesn't. He's still human, and obviously, this is not going to save him in any way. So I thought it was interesting to see. Caitlin then goes on to tell Wells that he should help his daughter navigate her powers instead of trying to destroy them. He should embrace it. You know, even though she has these powers, he should try to help her control it. And uh, Iris secretly, and I thought it was smart what Kaylin said to do, because yeah, he should do that. So Iris secretly goes to visit John, the abusive foster dad in the hospital. He starts saying that the damn metahuman freak almost killed him, and Iris figures out that Magenta was getting back at John for hurting her, and she was going to try it again. So at that moment, Iris looks out the window, and, uh, a giant boat is being lifted into the air, and is about to be tossed in the hospital. Such a good scene, honestly. This was per the perfect amount of tension. I really did love this. Again, even though we have Magenta for one episode, this episode was was very filled with tension. I definitely like that. And again, knowing that Dr. Alchemy is playing a role here, again, is very interesting. So, Magenta's out on the rooftop manipulating the massive metal tanker with her hands. Barry gets to the scene as fast as possible. Joe reminds him that Iris is still in the hospital, and Wells tells Barry to create a wind tunnel around the boat to propel it away from the innocent people in the hospital. But now what? And Wells is saying, you know, get out there, run, Jesse, run. So Jesse speeds, keeps the boat held up while Barry tries to talk Magenta out of it by saying to not let John tell her that she's a horrible person because he, he hasn't dealt with his own mistakes. And clearly, you know, he has past demons, she does too. Magenta explains she just wants him to stop hurting her, and that's really all that's going on there. So with that, Barry convinces Frankie to come back, puts Magenta away for good. She puts the boat down, cries she's so sorry as she hugs Barry, and again, I like that Alchemy was beaten here. He didn't end up winning in this situation, and Barry is able to save her. In the end, Frankie doesn't remember any of it, but Joe assures her that John will be locked up for what he did. She explains it started with dreams, she started having a Magenta, and hearing a voice of a man named Alchemy, who told her that he could give her whatever he wants, and overall, again, I'm very interested in getting into this character where he's gonna go, but Barry tells her that none of this is her fault, they've set her up in a good foster home, and they are there for her if Magenta ever returns, which I feel like she will, I mean, this is not gonna be the end of Magenta, especially since this is Dr. Alchemy that gave her these powers, I feel like he's going to make sure that Magenta comes back, I mean, obviously, he's the one that inherited these powers, you know, she inherited these powers from him, uh, he wanted her to conquer 
Frankie and keep Magenta, and he clearly has some larger role at play. We don't know what that is yet, but I feel like if I was Dr. Alchemy and I gave someone these powers, I would want them to keep them, and I feel like that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to try to get Frankie to keep these powers and maybe get Magenta back, but we'll have to see where that's going to go because I feel like that definitely is not over yet. We'll have to see, though. So Jesse and Wells make amends. Wells tells that she was tremendous out there and uh, just a really well done scene overall. He finally accepts that her name is Jesse Quick and he's going to call her that just overall really good. She then gives Jesse her very own red and yellow speedster uniform that Cisco created to help her, saying that it's time for him to let her be a hero for everyone else. And I like this. It looks like next week that um, actually Flash and Jesse Quick, they're going to become a team, and that makes sense. I mean, Flash has had his team. If you guys have looked at the com I mean, I don't read the comics, but I've heard since last season that Jesse Quick and Kid Flash are part of Flash's team, and we kind of need to establish this, and I like the way they're doing that. But, at the same time, that is kind of what killed Arrow. I will definitely say that. Starting When they started to focus more on the uh, ensemble and less on Oliver himself, that's what kind of killed Arrow. The difference is The Flash is a much more fun show, and there's a lot more you can do with it. So I feel like it might work here, but we'll have to see. So finally, Iris uh, is in this royal blue dress. She meets up with a well-suited Barry up on another date. He explains in order for this to work, they need to be who they really are. And I like this. I like that unlike what they did with uh, James and Kara, or Felicity and Oliver, you know, in, in uh, Supergirl and Arrow, these two actually are getting together. I like seeing I like that they are starting together. I like, I, I like that they are staying together. I like that we're seeing that's possible for them to have a relationship. It's just not really something we see in a ton. Again, because, you know, in the other in the other episodes, they in the other shows, they've kind of start relationships, ended relationships before they started, and he whisks her off in the sun, sets down the streets of Central City to a beautiful spot where they kiss until he gets called back to the office again. So I'm we see the ending of this episode, very interesting. Joe shows Barry and Julian surveillance video of Claris. There you go, that's his name, Claris. He's in prison, being violently swung around like a puppet by his invisible hands. He's screaming, alchemy, alchemy. Joe asks Barry if he thinks alchemy might be here because of Flashpoint. Barry recalls that he has heard that name before. He does know what capacity, but of course he has heard that name before. And that is the way the episode ends. Really interesting stuff overall. I really do like where the season is headed, but let's get more into this episode overall. So like I said, for me, this was a very back-to-basics episode. Uh, I really did enjoy where this episode is headed overall. I think overall it's going to be very interesting. But my biggest thing that I'm most interested in is Dr. Alchemy. This character clearly is going to a bunch of random people, and he's giving people who don't have the greatest lives, and he's trying to give them a better life, basically, and get them to rebel against their said attackers or someone who's against them. And overall, I think it's very interesting. My question is, why specifically these people? Why is Alchemy targeting these people? What does he want from these people? What is his real goal here? We don't really know, but I feel like that's something that I'm very interested in seeing. It seems like he has his hand in, in every single pot, you know, in every single pile, basically, and everything that's happening this season so far is directly because of Dr. Alchemy and... I'm really interested in seeing where that's going to go. But knowing that he's out there and that he is giving people these in, you know, these uh, metahuman abilities, could he possibly be the one to help out Wally? And if that's where we're headed, that could be really interesting because a lot of people are thinking, oh, Wally's going to be part of the team. I don't see it that way. I honestly could see Wally going in a darker direction where he ends up working with Dr. Alchemy because, you know, Barry and Joe don't want him to work with them. You know, they keep kind of like neglecting him. I could really see him going that direction with him, and that'd be really interesting if they did do that. I don't know if they're going to do that, but overall, that could be really interesting if they did. And I think overall, that's going to be very interesting to see where that goes. I like seeing where Jesse and Wells are headed. I like that Wells is letting her become a part of Barry's team. I think overall that's very interesting and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing these two working side by side together, what's going on with that. Barry clearly does know about alchemy. Uh, I'm, you know, looking forward to seeing more of the history of alchemy. I like that Barry has had effects on, you know, there are little things that he has done. They're not huge effects, but there definitely are some small effects that have happened because of Barry going back in time and I like seeing that overall. I thought that was definitely interesting. I think we, if, if I'm not mistaken, we found that the MetaHuman Tracker is a thing, which I am very happy about. You guys know how cool I think the MetaHuman Tracker is, and I'm pretty sure that's a thing now, uh, which is awesome. I love that last season, and I hope that that's still a thing, but we'll have to see 
where that's going to go. What are the changes to Earth 2? That's one of my big questions now. Now that Barry's changed things, what are the changes to Earth 2? I feel like we're going to find that out very soon, but I'm just curious and you know what exactly those changes are because I don't really know. But I'm assuming that since there obviously were a lot of changes to Earth 1, there's got to be some changes to Earth 2. There just kind of has to be. I think that those two worlds just kind of coincide with each other. And I think it would just make sense that for them to change things in, you know, Earth 2. Magenta is definitely coming back. I know that Alchemy, you know, Alchemy obviously wanted her to avenge Frankie and, you know, fully transform into Magenta. And I feel like definitely Magenta is going to come back in some form. Uh, but we'll have to see. Definitely that's going to be very interesting. But overall, guys, I really enjoyed this episode. Like I said, I thought this really was a Back to Basics episode. Very simple. Not a ton to talk about in this episode. But overall, very well done. Definitely did enjoy it overall. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. Loved your thoughts on it. I really did enjoy this one overall. I really am enjoying the season, especially if we're headed where I think we're headed. Things are going to get really good. That's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And guys, I am, I'm sorry that I haven't been able to make a ton of videos this week. I've been very busy all week. But I am going to make sure my next video will be for American Horror Story. Hopefully, I'll be able to review tonight. I don't know if I will. Don't quote me on that. But I will see you guys for that. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I will definitely see you guys for that. Okay, bye.